day, everyone. Thank you for coming today to today's forum on the Open Library Foundation. My name is Peter Murray, and I'm the open source community advocate at Index Data and the host for today's event. We're borrowing the time slot normally reserved for folio forums to present this webinar on the Open Library Foundations. Welcome to our colleagues from Viewfind, Coral, and Reshare, as well as anyone who has an interest in the foundation. This session, like all forums, is being recorded and will be posted to the Open Library Foundation YouTube channel. As an open forum, participants can see each other and all questions submitted. And we have muted everyone except for the speakers to ensure good sound quality. We are at capacity on Zoom today, so there are two ways to ask questions. Uh, if you're on Zoom, use the uh, question and answer box at the bottom of the screen. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, please tweet with the hashtag of our borrowed time slot. Uh, that's Folio Forum. Uh, and we have uh, people watching uh, Twitter that will let us know of questions and comments that come from the hashtag Folio Forum. Today's presenter is Ginny Boyer, uh, Managing Director of the Open Library Foundation. Uh, Ginny, welcome and take it away. Thank you, Peter. Everyone, I just want to say thank you for being here this morning. Um, I realize that the last week has been um, taxing and transitional for all of us. Uh, so I'm grateful to have you all here this morning. Um, I hope this is a, a, a nice chunk out of your day to learn about the Open Library Foundation. I'm excited to share this with you. We have been doing a lot of work over the last year, um, growing and maturing the foundation to provide services to its many projects, which I'll talk about today. So again, I'm grateful for you being here um, so I can share with you about the OLF. So let's jump right in. I wanted to start by talking about the mission of the foundation tell you a little bit about its background and where it came from and some of our base services that we offer um, in terms of how we serve our projects and also what capabilities we create for other members of our broader community. So the OLF's mission, um, our goal is to assist and facilitate um, many different types of organization so ed educational organizations, foundations, partnerships, uh, we have lots of relationships with commercial entities that are working to build open source software. Um, and this, this activity is specifically geared to supporting libraries and education um, within the research and teaching sector. We do this by enabling engineers and contributors to build and grow projects and create um, a holistic environment for that project to exist and for that community of peers to be able to collaborate and communicate to get their work done. Uh, and we aim to provide a high value environment for our members so that the success of the projects can in turn complement the success of the foundation and can serve as a model for attracting other like open source initiatives to our ecosystem. The foundation is fairly new. It was created in 2016, um, and this is really from our bylaws as an unbiased, independent, not-for-profit organization um, to ensure the availability, accessibility, and sustainability of open source and open access projects. So many of you are likely um, embedded in various open source software projects. There are many that exist across the library um, ecosystem. And not all of those are, well, they are all incubated in different ways. They're hosted in different ways. They're built in different ways. Uh, the foundation is not, uh, does not present with a cookie cutter mold for how you build software. What it does is provide a home, um, a, a space, if you will, for that project to land and for that community um, of development to land to be able to ensure its success, its sustainability and its longevity. 
And it began um, as a space to do that primarily for the Folio project. Um, the foundation's really first project was Folio um, and it, it holds the intellectual property for the Folio project. But not long after that, uh, the board and, and the, the community in general really saw the capability of the foundation being able to serve many projects beyond Folio, uh, both big and small. And over the last year, we've really been working to broaden our value proposition and our capability to be able to do that and to grow a diversity of constituent groups. Um, it is important to note, again, software developed by the communities um, is hosted by the foundation, is freely available under really various open source software licenses. Uh, for personal or institutional use. Um, we, we are a safe harbor for intellectual property, but that intellectual property does still sit with, uh, with the project itself. So its purpose, um, to assist and facilitate, again, educational organizations, foundations, partnerships, to really develop and sustain software. Um, you know, we, we see many projects that are able to organize, to create an idea, uh, and to be able to, to develop uh, software, but to be able to uh, land that software within a community that is able to sustain it for the long haul is a tricky endeavor. I think we see that across the board. And the purpose of the foundation is really to create that capability, to create that environment and ecosystem uh, for any projects that don't have an administrative home. And that administrative home could be with another like foundational organization or institution. Um, and we are looking to create essentially that ecosystem of capability for those projects. So what are some of the services that we offer? Well, to begin, the foundation is a nonprofit. It is a 501c3. And the benefits of that are that all of the work of that instantiation has already been done. And that's quite a process. Um, there are a lot of benefits and access to discounted services that we can pass along to our members and constituents. So by joining the foundation and allowing us to, uh, and specifically allowing us to handle some business operations, um, we can pass those benefits along to the projects. And that is a, that is a, a great benefit. Um, that includes tax reporting and compliance. Um, one of the things we're also aiming to do in the coming year um, is to offer uh, instantiation to each project as its own legal entity, which is really important uh, because that does give independence to the project as opposed to it being really a collaboration of institutions um, it is a single identifiable entity that can uh, engage in contracts, can properly govern itself and operate independently um, with its own legal distinction. However, it does that um, under the umbrella of our 501c3. So as an organization, we can still handle all of the administrative overhead that comes along with that, um, which is, is very valuable. Influence and advocacy is another service we feel like we offer. So there's participation in internal governance um, within our organization. We're creating capability for um, members of projects and, and really just members at large of the foundation to participate in our governance, uh, defining strategic vision and goals for our organization and helping to steward the community toward the, the overall goals of our community at large. By enabling our members to contribute new technologies and opportunities within the foundation. Um, and by doing that, really attracting a variety of projects that can serve to enhance the library marketplace, really disrupted in positive ways uh, for libraries and educational institutions. And while doing that, creating connections and interoperabilities between the different projects. I think another thing that, uh, that we see is Again, every project is different, how it builds itself, uh, conducts its governance, um, how it even develops its software it is, is really done very individually and distinctly. Uh, and there's a lot to learn from that in terms of looking at how different projects are able to be successful. Uh, so that enablement, again, is, is, is um, enabling projects to share what they're doing with others so that best practice can be shared um, and benefited from. So a diversified member community is also really ripe for partnership and collaboration. And we have seen that um, with various institutions and for-profit organizations working together to ideate and create different types of projects 
um, that are, are majorly beneficial for the library environment. Partnership and networking. Again, close and open relationships between vendors and library organizations. We uh, have many projects that uh, have those types of relationships and we're seeking to really elevate that as a way to transform the library marketplace and to create capability not only for libraries, but also for our for-profit friends um, that are able to identify revenue models and revenue streams based on building software development and building software and op offering services around software to our uh, community at large. We have a thriving annual meeting, WolfCon, which I'll talk about later, um, which is an, intended to facilitate connections and conversations. Um, we had our second WolfCon just a few months ago, and we're aiming for WolfCon to really be a high impact meeting that brings together um, a diversity of institutions and individuals that are operating in the open source software arena on behalf of libraries and education. Uh, so that we can share best practice, we can share ideas, um, and we can work together. At the same time, creating capability for the projects within the foundation to hold actual working meetings at that conference where they can get, uh, get their work done um, instead of having to duplicate that with separate meetings, which can be costly and very logistically challenging. Um, also aligning purpose, shared work and efficiencies. Again, all of this happens. Uh, through collaboration, conversation, and communication. So breaking down silos and ineff inefficient approaches to developing open source library technology. Uh, education, learning, and support. So again, regular communications, resources, and learning opportunities. This is a big area for growth for us in the coming year as we uh, mature our marketing and communication plan and think about how we can best serve our constituents with news, updates, and various events um, and materials that can support our community at large. Uh, how we can provide and develop e-learning and training opportunities that can support um, institutions that are implementing software or that are interested in undertaking taking a software development initiative or a project that wants to learn more about how to, how to incubate and sustain community within its software development activities. Um, all of these are opportunities for the foundation to offer um, uh, learning and support for its constituents. And also uh, promoting guidance and best practice on community organization and sustainability. Um, again, we don't feel like we are the authority to be able to say this is how you must do something or this is how you should do it. Uh, but I think that through communication and collaboration, we can identify what does work well um, and we can use that to elevate best practice um, for the benefit of all. So I'd like to talk about our current OLF community projects. And this slide serves to show you who those are. So I spoke to you about Folio and many of you are probably joining from the Folio community, but we also work with ReShare. We work with GoKB, ViewFind. Uh, we've had conversations with Coral and we are talking with another smaller project, ARC. Um, in addition to working with the open library environment. Um, so we have a thriving community um, and we had uh, over 250, I believe, attendees at our conference this year um, and the year before, and with interest growing, um, not only in just our membership at large, but also with projects interested in uh, what the foundation has to offer and its capability as an administrative and collaborative home uh, for, for, their, for their work. So again, OLF projects are open source communities that are developing or supporting software that call the OLF their administrative home. Um, we could offer, uh, or they may utilize our services, our collaborative and technical infrastructure, or they could simply use us um, for uh, the benefits of our nonprofit entity to protect the intellectual interests of their project. Um, I'm going to talk later about the work that we've done on instantiating a business model, um, which correlates to a service model of what we offer for different tiers of membership. Um, and we have a really nice broad range of offerings 
Uh, a project may need us to do a lot of things for them. Uh, they may need legal services from us or banking support. We can provide that. Uh, or they may have all of that figured out and they may just need a place to park their IP uh, and they may want to use our collaborative tools and they may want some help in instantiating themselves in a, as an LLC. And beyond that, they're good to, to conduct their own activities and operations. Uh, the foundation is able to provide uh, a wealth of services, again, depending on what the needs of the project are. And we're able to scale up and down based on those needs. So our relationship to the projects, again, um, is providing administrative and community support. Uh, we do provide development infrastructure. Uh, development infrastructure. Um, we do that through uh, services such as Amazon Web Services, um, GitHub repositories. We have subscriptions to certain development um, tools such as Packet or Proto. We also subscribe to and support collaborative infrastructure such as Zoom. The Zoom you're using today is uh, hosted on behalf of the foundation, uh, as well as Slack, uh, Confluence, and Jira, and various other tools that um, are Google Suite, uh, various other tools that allow, again, a group of uh, institutions and individuals to come together, host conversations, um, and actually get the work done on software development initiatives. Beyond the infrastructure that we support, I did mention legal services. So we do have a relationship with a nonprofit legal firm that works with us to define process and policy for supporting the activities of our projects. Um, they also work with us to be able to do that instantiation of the LLC, again, so that we can give independence um, and, and entity support, if you will, to the projects that desire that. Uh, we do full accounting and banking support services for those projects that need that. Again, some projects aren't situated within um, a single institution and are the result of um, you know, an aggregate of institutions just coming together to build a thing. Um, within that, you end up having uh, a variety of volunteers contributing to the work, but those core business operations that you really need, um, really just to keep the doors open and pay the bills, um, it is, is kind of hard to, to support in some respects. And so the, the OLF can, uh, can and does uh, do that on behalf of some of its projects. I did talk about intellectual property, um, safe harbor, and again, just generally incubating a community of practice and peers. Um, and we really see our annual meeting um, as kind of a feather in our cap for being able to promote that and support the working activities of our projects and constituents at large. We intentionally refer to the foundation as a lightweight organization seeking to support the needs of its projects, but again, without imposing restrictions or requirements. So that means we don't tell them how to govern themselves, how to develop their software or how to handle their community at large. Um, we have a chartering process where we ask questions such as how do you govern yourself? How are you financially um, independent? and what is the complexion of your community look like. But we really uh, look at that to determine whether or not the ideals of the project are in line with our own mission and values, um, not to uh, really complete a checklist of requirements for entry um, for any given software project. Uh, and we really look as, at that as a boon because again, um, we see a diversity of projects that do not fit a single mold um, and that a, a, a heavyweight um, operation would not, would not scale, would not suit a diversity of constituents. So I'd like to, to pivot here to talk about foundation leadership. So I can tell you about how we, how and who um, runs and operates the foundation. So again, I uh, operate as the managing director of the foundation and that uh, became a real thing last March. Um, I was appointed the halftime managing director at that time, um, in addition to being the managing director of Olay. Uh, and in that role, I really manage and orchestrate all of the business functions of the foundation and build capability within the foundation for it to again, uh, scale and mature, mature its services to support um, our constituents. I work very closely with our board of directors 
to develop and approve policy, uh, develop, approve, and manage budgets, resource allocations, and governance at large for our organization. We do have an executive board of directors and their role is really to govern and guide the foundation's strategic priorities uh, that should be and will be uh, in collaboration with our community at large. We, uh, they solicit, collect and identify, um, you know, mechanisms for raising money for supporting the foundation. Um, we are really excited to instantiate our business model this year. We, we actually formally voted that in uh, at our meeting at WolfCon, which again was just in January. We'll be working very hard to stand that up this coming year. Um, and we have, uh, we have really ambitious goals uh, for growing the, the support base for the foundation in the coming year. Uh, and the board of directors is really uh, intended to support that activity and to help to share the goodness um, and to promote outreach of the foundation to their constituents as well. They also oversee and approve budgets, general administrative functions, et cetera. And our board of directors can be seen here on the right. So you can see we do have a diversity of uh, representatives from across the globe and from uh, various types of organization, both academic um, and not. In terms of uh, the operations of the foundation, we do have an executive committee, which are uh, essentially our board officers. And this is really what I refer to as the operational wing of the um, board of directors. So we are non-voting members of the board who work with, um, they work with me to support the operations of the foundation. And we, we really go from our board meetings and understanding what our strategic priorities are and, and get that work done. Uh, and those, those individuals, as you can see on the right, uh, David Carlson is actually uh, one of our board of directors and our board president. Uh, he does operate with us very much in um, an active capacity on the executive committee. Um, I myself am on that group, as well as Scott Anderson from Millersville, who is our treasurer. Uh, Christopher Spalding and Steph Buck from EBSCO who serve um, as secretaries of the board. And we really work as, um, we're, we're really the staff, if you will, of the foundation. In addition to um, our operational committees, and currently we have two of those. We have a marketing and communications team, which is led by Rachel Fadlin, um, who is with EBSCO. She's fantastic. Uh, she does all things marketing, on so many different planes, it's it's hard to keep up with them all. Um, but uh, through Rachel's leadership, uh, we handle content and marketing for the uh, foundation at large, uh, seek to elevate and grow the brand of the foundation, uh, ensure the presence and voice of the foundation is present within our community and at meetings, um, and really seek to grow our brand at large. Um, and she is also a massive, plays a massive role. Uh, and I'm also gonna do a shout out to Ka uh, Kate Waldron from EBSCO and Patrick Zinn in, um, in executing the conference every year, which is a massive undertaking. It could not be done without them. Uh, we also have an infrastructure committee who is led by our very own Peter Murray, who is also facilitating the meeting today. Thank you, Peter. Peter is uh, with Index Data. Um, and, and again, this is really a workforce volunteer group as well. Again, everyone on the marketing and communications team and infrastructure team, um, including the leads, do this in a volunteer capacity, meaning that those individuals have full-time jobs elsewhere <laughs> and still do this uh, to support the activities of the foundation uh, because they believe in it. They believe in its uh, strategic importance um, and, and are, are also very good at operating in this capacity. Um, so Peter and our infrastructure team really serve to support the infrastructure of the foundation. And those are those tools that I mentioned previously, such as managing our Amazon Web Services, our GitHub repositories, and the various other tools that we use to communicate and collaborate with one another, such as Zoom, Slack, um, our Google Drive, and G Suite. So again, they uh, manage and support the, these offerings for our um, community at large. And work with me as the managing director to try to prioritize projects um, and deliver services. Again, on the infrastructure side, 
this is really um, uh, really a service offering. Um, and, and trying to balance that and determine how you do that well with, a, with an all volunteer team um, is a balancing act. And so we work very hard to try to achieve that uh, and to provide good service to our communities um, and our constituents. So our organizational structure, I have a, just a basic outline here. Again, at the top, you have myself as the managing director. Um, and uh, the circle beneath that, the OLFEC is that executive committee. We work with the OLF board, um, it really is the, the executive wing, if you will, of the foundation. In the middle, the OLF leadership roundtable, I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, we will be really creating that capability and growing that um, within the coming year. Uh, and this is not hierarchical in any way. This is just how it, it's kind of laid out here. Um, but at the, the bottom of this diagram on the left, you see our OLF members. And those members um, could come from institutions such as Duke, Texas A&M, Cornell. Um, they could come from a commercial organization such as Index Data, EBSCO, Bywater. Uh, or they could just be an individual who's interested in open source software in general or the mission of the foundation. Um, we actually get inquiries about that often um, of people that are not really active in any of our projects or um, active institutions, but are just generally interested in what we're doing. Um, and they are able to participate in our committees. Again, it's all volunteer. Um, and so if we have a, a desire or willingness to contribute to our work, we are happy to have um, people to assist us with that. On the right, the projects as well. Um, we look at those distinctly again because they're kind of a distinct entity with their own operations and yet they contribute people as well from their ranks to support the operations of the OLF. The leadership roundtable is new. Um, this is really intended to be a forum for participation and engagement uh, for elected OLF members and project constituents. So as we have um, talked about our, our community and our business model this last year, we felt the need to create the capability to really have engagement from our community at large. Um, we intend for that community to grow uh, quite significantly. And as, as you all know, it is difficult as you grow to, um, to, to have a group manage conversation and decision making as it just kind of gets larger and larger and larger. So we're seeking to create this leadership roundtable as um, an elective intensive group that, that really helps to steward the operations and the strategic goals of the foundation uh, so that it is, is truly um, achieving those goals and meeting the needs um, of its constituents at large. So again, they intend to um, serve as a body participating in organizational definition, working very closely with our, our operational uh, committees or staff, as I kind of refer to them, um, review, suggest, and, and expand community documentation um, and best practice, uh, build relationships. So again, facilitating uh, cross-pollination and innovation among the projects um, seeking to identify how we can maintain those connections and conversations beyond the annual meeting. Again, that's just one time every year um, that we seek to have a face-to-face, -face, but there are many different types of opportunities for doing that throughout the year uh, so that we can be supporting one another. And we're really aiming for the Leadership Roundtable to be a group um, ideating on how we can best do that and helping us instantiate those capabilities. Um, we hope to build what we're calling a professional services marketplace this year, um, which is, is kind of a managed directory, if you will, of participants that um, kind of promote to the world at large, you know, who's working with who and who's doing what, um, you know, what services are offered uh, and, and potentially what discounts with OLF membership can we broker um, with those institutions and organizations that, that we're supporting and doing business with. And again, how can we share best practice for project incubation um, that may serve to support an existing project, and there are many, or may serve to um, provision a brand new project for success. Um, I think it's very easy for, for people to get together and have fantastic ideas for a tool, but figuring out how to create that tool 
um, with a diversity of people and institutions um, and different opinions for how you do that and how you sustain it, that's the challenge. Uh, and there are a lot of projects that have been doing this for a good long time that have a lot to share in that arena. And we're hoping again that the Leadership Roundtable can help us as an organization um, to really be organized to share that out more effectively. Um, and then when necessary to facilitate conflict and dispute resolution amongst our projects and community members. Um, and again, to help us figure out how to just do business um, and to do it well. So some highlights from the last year that would be good to talk about and share. Uh, we have a new website and it is beautiful. Uh, this was a very large undertaking last, um, last summer. Before this, our, our website was very, very small and uh, very much a template, an out of the box template. Um, and it was, it was time for an overhaul. And we undertook this last, last uh, summer um, with a brand new design, brand new content, and really just seeking more to elevate what we're doing who we're working with and, and who our leaders are, who are helping us to kind of get this up and off the ground. Um, and also seeking to instantiate new communication avenues for sharing out the good work of the foundation. If you haven't seen our website, I would encourage you to go and visit it and take a look. Um, not only is it just, it's beautifully designed um, and intuitive, but there's a lot of information there um, that will just expound on um, some of the things I'm talking about today. Um, I mentioned communication avenues, um, and you will notice if you go to our website uh, in our navigation bar, we do have a link to our newsroom. So in addition to uh, standing up a new website, uh, we now have a Twitter feed, uh, we have a news feed, and we have um, at the bottom of this, which I'll actually show, this is a screenshot, uh, but I'll actually show at the end of this presentation, we have the capability for you to sign up for a mailing list to stay informed about what's going on within the foundation. Um, we are really, one of our biggest goals um, and strategic priorities for the coming year um, is an outreach and communication plan. And uh, you know, part of that will be sharing out all of the good detail and information we have about the business model so that we can talk to you about how you can join and support the foundation and get involved. Um, but also how we can share the good work happening within the projects of the foundation. So telling you about new folio releases, viewfind releases, um, what's going on within the GoKB community and the reshare community. Um, so, you know, again, if after this presentation you have, um, you know, more interest in the foundation or in just staying connected, I would encourage you to go to our website and to this newsroom page and sign up uh, to stay informed uh, and involved with our activities over the coming year. There will be much more to come. I mentioned WolfCon. This was our second WolfCon. Um, this is an annual meeting, but for a lot of reasons that were primarily logistical because um, executing a conference is a lot of work. We did not have a meeting in uh, year 2019, we did in 2018, uh, but we are on an annual cadence now. Uh, WolfCon 2020 was um, at College Station uh, at, at Texas A&M. It was just a fantastically executed meeting. A lot of great working meetings happened for our project constituents. We had a great general track as well and had uh, various uh, open source advocates join us to talk about um, uh, best practice and, um, and tools for supporting the work of our communities. And it was just a really great, um, it was a really great time for seeing one another and working together um, and just communicating about what we've all been doing over the past year. Um, WolfCon 2021 will uh, be in Hamburg, Germany. And we will again be sharing news about that um, over the coming weeks and months. And again, if you're interested in attending the conference next year, um, hopefully we will all be in a place where we can can travel and attend the conference. If not, I'm sure we'll be working very hard on instantiating a virtual conference to support us all. We do have the capability to do that. Um, but again, the best way to stay informed about the dates for that, uh, how you can get involved and what the program for that might look like would be to go to that newsroom page that I just mentioned and sign up for updates. And they'll be coming out throughout the end of this year. 
Um, another big thing that that I have just been, you know, in the weeds on is business model and sustainability planning. Um, I noted, noted at the bottom, we've worked with um, community strategy consultant, John O'Bacon on this. Uh, and that has really been to instantiate a business model and sustainability plan, uh, both for the OLF and for Folio. Um, and, and not to just specifically elevate Folio here, but Folio being the first project of, of the foundation. Um, it has a lot of ties with the foundation. We've been doing these efforts in parallel um, and really rolling out, getting close to rolling out on both fronts, um, a business model and sustainability plan for both has been a, an enormous amount of work, uh, but also very exciting. Um, so, you know, again, seeking to provision the organization to grow um, and to be uh, financially stable and to, to really be able to grow its capability um, for its projects and members uh, for the long haul. So we're very excited to have this in place, to be able to share this with you all over the coming weeks and months. And you know, again, beyond just communication and outreach, our, our biggest goal for the coming year is promoting this new model, promoting governance opportunities, and really growing our membership within the OLF. Um, and that segues beautifully into this next slide, which are goals for 2020 and beyond. And really OLF membership is primary among that. Um, on our website, you will see that we, we kind of have three pillars, if you will, um, of, of, uh, of constituents. Uh, we have our communities of practice. Those are our software projects that we are supporting. Um, the foundation, again, serves as a home for those communities. Um, we are seeking to, um, to grow that, to, to invite more projects to charter with the foundation, to have a diversity of different types of projects happening within our ecosystem, and you know, hopefully to be able to bring those constituent groups together to think about um, you know, these projects are fantastic in and of themselves, but the capability um, to be had with interoperability and creating connections between these different projects is also enormous. And so looking to do that and doing that um, uh, within kind of a controlled ecosystem is, is really exciting and we're seeking to do that in the coming year. Um, beyond uh, communities of practice, uh, we're also seeking to just generally grow a membership base. So you could be working within Folio or working within ReShare and still individually support the foundation. Your institution could choose to do that um, or not. You know, you could uh, be an individual working at an institution who is following um, the developments of ReShare or GoKB. Your institution could be doing that. They could be looking at Folio. Um, and, and looking to see if that might work for them, but not currently invested or embedded in any way. Um, supporting the foundation is a fantastic way, not only to ensure the sustainability of that project, um, but to also stay involved in uh, the growth and direction of those projects and to determine how you can get involved. Um, there are fantastic ways to be piped in and connected with the, in, the institutions and individuals operating within those projects. And individual membership of the foundation is a great way to get your feet wet in um, uh, seeking to understand what the, the capabilities could be for your organization. And really supporters at large, um, we fully um, understand and also have seen uh, that there are many organizations that um, may not really see a future um, implementing any of our projects, but still see the good work happening here. Um, the creativity and innovation happening in this space and are generally willing to support it uh, because it's in parallel with their own mission uh, and their own strategic values. And so when we think about growth for the coming year, not only are we seeking to grow our project base and our member base, but also our supporters at large. Um, because again, the more capability that we can create within the foundation, the more capability we can create for our projects and for the different constituent groups that can benefit from those projects or ideate new ones um, that may not exist currently. Uh, and that's, that's incredibly exciting to think about how we can position ourselves to be able to do that. 
Uh, some of the goals of our business modeling to promote clear paths of membership and support opportunities um, it is clearly our has been our primary goal uh, to promote governance and participation opportunities for our members. Again, we, we want people to be involved with us, to be working alongside us to support and operate the foundation. Uh, we want to share the value proposition of the foundation. So when we talk about membership, we want you to automatically understand why it's important and valuable to your institution, both tangibly and intangibly, um, that, the, that membership and avenues for engagement are beneficial to you both personally and institutionally. And to demonstrate our strategic business goals and grow revenue um, for the operational budget of the foundation. And that in turn, again, creates capability for its own projects. Um, we do have capability on our website to fundraise for our projects in, in general as well. Um, we may attract uh, investors or supporters to the foundation that choose to donate specifically to Folio or specifically to Reshare. Um, and we're able to pipe that those dollars directly to the project um, instead of to the operational capability of the foundation. And we want to grow that. We want to grow that capability and to really share the foundation as a, a way and means of doing that. So we have different support opportunities. Again, we have general philanthropic support. Uh, we will have a fee structure for projects or communities to join and support the foundation, as well as various member types um, in general for the foundation. Uh, and just in general, I'm going to go over these. I'm not going to present the details again because they're they're quite deep and they'll be going up on our website soon enough and being shared out in various communication channels. But just to give you an idea, um, on the project side, if you're in, involved in a project um, or thinking of creating an open source software project, we will have various uh, tier types or, or membership types. Um, OLF full project, affiliated and associated project that correlates to different types of benefits and has different, a different fee structure for what you need from the foundation and what we, we can provide to you. Um, and again, depending on that membership tier, um, there are opportunities for administrative support, infrastructure support, and various other uh, tangible and intangible such as community development, marketing and outreach support. Uh, and access to that professional services marketplace that I mentioned. Again, the, the professional services marketplace of the PSM, as we refer to it, um, is intended again to be a forum for collaboration. Um, it could be a space where commercial organizations demonstrate their capability and their willingness to collaborate um, and where library institutions can organize um, and talk about their specifications and what they need uh, and, and it's more of a, just a, a we kind of referred to it as a matchmaking service, if you will, um, where you come forward and you have an idea, but you don't quite know how to do it. Um, there could be another in organization that has the capability to do that. And how can we create those connections and those partnerships to be able to create capability? Again, what this could look like, a managed directory of participants with uh, clarified project engagements. We will aim to and hope to offer um, discounts and services based on those engagements and opportunities, and then creating mechanics for project incubation or RFP services um, for existing projects or new ones. Uh, we talked about creating a registered service provider list. So if we have uh, for-profit entities that come forward and are interested in working with libraries and educational institutions or are currently, um, how can the projects promote the good work that's happening and help to create capability for those organizations? Uh, so again, we are looking to elevate good work here. And by doing that, um, to create more transparency around capability that can happen uh, for existing projects that may want to um, engage in a similar activity or collaboration or new projects that have an idea of something they want to do, but they don't quite know how to get it off the ground or what the capabilities are for doing something like this. OLF community membership in general. We will have different tiers of membership options uh, for people to consider. Uh, you may work within an academic institution and your institution may choose to join and support the foundation. 
Um, you may work for a museum or cultural heritage institution. So you may be interested in a nonprofit membership. Um, the OLF associated project is where perhaps your project is not a member of the foundation, um, but, but you want to support the foundation and grow its capability as a future administrative home for it. There is a, a very low bar way of supporting the foundation and creating capability for your project through an associated project membership, a uh, supporter membership. And again, individual memberships. Uh, we, we see a lot of this and we want to create the capability for individuals to be able to participate in our ecosystem where and whenever possible. And that correlates to access to governments and representation, access to that professional services marketplace, um, elevation on our website, and, and certainly a discount to our annual meeting um, in terms of registration so that we can all get together and work together um, and figure out the good work uh, that we can manifest within this ecosystem. We will have an opportunity for development partners to support the capability of the foundation. So they may, may be engaged in uh, specifying and developing open source software, and they wanna participate as collaborative partners and good citizens of our community. By supporting the foundation, they show uh, a real dedicated support to our mission uh, and to open source in general, and that builds trust and confidence and capability in institutions um, and consortia coming together and working with for-profit or development partners to build open source software. Uh, we really see a really rich future with these types of relationships. Um, and we're hoping that the OLF is a really great incubation space for creating those relationships and building that trust um, and capability for doing this. Uh, the same for end user supporters. So, you know, there may be, and what we mean here is, you know, a, an organization that's providing support or hosting services. They may not be developing software, but they may be providing support or hosted services for ViewFund or for ReShare. Um, again, they have a vested interest in the uh, sustainability and longevity of that project. Uh, it would be to their benefit to support the foundation and to encourage others in their environment and ecosystem to support the foundation so that it can persist and the project that they are invested in can persist. So we will have a membership opportunity for that as well uh, for those end user supporters of uh, OLF institutions and OLF projects. I mentioned our newsroom. This is really the most immediate way to sign up, to stay a part of the conversation, to stay involved. I would encourage you to go and sign up and stay in touch with the foundation and our activities. Uh, we will very much be growing and communicating in the coming year. Um, and we want you to be a part of that conversation. Uh, we want you to be a part of our community. And this is really the most immediate way to do that. In addition to following us on Twitter, if Twitter is something that you do, uh, please do, um, please do follow us. Uh, this is the form that I mentioned, again, screenshots here, but if you go to that newsroom page and scroll to the bottom, there is a very simple form that you can fill out that can uh, wrap, rope you in to our uh, communication infrastructure and can keep you in the loop for all of the good activities and announcements we'll be rolling out this year. And that is my primer and introduction to the Open Library Foundation. Again, grateful for you being here and willing to answer any questions that anyone might have at this point. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, yes, if you do have questions, uh, please put them in the Q&A box uh, at the bottom of the Zoom window. Uh, or if you're one of the ones that's coming to us on YouTube, uh, use the hashtag uh, that we're borrowing Folio Forum uh, to ask those questions. Uh, Jenny, I, you talked early on about the uh, uh, projects having being kind of their own legal entity. Mm -hmm. um, can you describe a little bit more what that what that kind of looks like, maybe organizationally on paper? Absolutely. So we have been we've work, been working with our legal team on this for the last couple of months. And what we see um, is when when we let's take folio as an example, 
Um, Folio is really an aggregate of, of various types of institutions that are pulling resources and people to build software. But it is not a single entity that can really do business for itself. So it relies on the foundation to be able to support its business operations. The OLF can do that, but it really needs a single business entity on Folio's side to be able to engage with. Um, in the absence of that, uh, there, there are really all manner of liabilities that come into play. And especially when we're doing things like banking, we want to be able to ensure the integrity of all of the projects that when we work with a project, we are working with an identified legal entity um, that has separate banking, has separate governance, and really kind of governs its own operations and has protection around that. Mm. Uh, so our legal team will instantiate the project as its own legal entity. Um, the, the requirements for that in terms of governance are very minimal. Uh, so it doesn't impact community dynamics or governance dynamics at all. Um, it really is just a series of paperwork that instantiates the project as a legal business entity with whom we can contract with to provide services. And probably then also eligible to get grants and, and uh, other sources of funding like that. Absolutely. 100%. Yes. Nice. Nice. Uh, a question uh, from uh, the audience. Uh, can a nonprofit, uh, say like uh, Project Muse, join GoKB? Uh, and we don't, I don't know if we have any GoKB representatives here, or maybe if uh, you have a um, thought on that, Ginny. Well, what I can share is you see my email here on the slide. What you can do is email me that same question and I can connect you with GoKB. So I think it, it is important to understand that each of the projects uh, may have, don't necessarily, all have their own business model and ways for, for joining the project. And that could be both financially and from a participation perspective. Um, I assume there are many ways that you can join, support, and participate in GoKB. Um, and I am happy to provide a connection to be able to facilitate that conversation. Mm, so that, that's a good example of how the, the projects can be their own thing while still uh, gaining the, the, uh, the benefits of, of being part of a larger whole. Exactly. So we're really able to, again, do that matchmaking, that direct connection, that liaising, if you will, but without stepping on the toes of the project that can choose to operate itself and grow its community and membership as it chooses. Uh, and that also gives me the opportunity to apologize to the GoKB community for uh, not listing them as I was going off the, the top of my head, uh, the, uh, the projects that uh, were, uh, are, that are affiliated uh, with the Open Library Foundation as I was describing them in, in the introduction. Uh, my apologies uh, for missing them. Uh, let me see here. Uh, do you have a sense of when the new membership structure will become available? Uh, we are interested in joining as an academic member. Absolutely. So we are currently uh, follow actually this week, last week, we had our first meeting to discuss that. We are working with the web team to get the details up on the website in the coming weeks. Um, we are also uh, creating a membership committee that will be assembling a membership package, if you will. In the most immediate term, if you have interest, expressions of interest for membership, if you want to email me, uh, I actually have been just collecting um, interest in membership. And when I do have that packet available and when those details are up on our website, I will follow up with you on those details. Another way, again, um, you know, if you didn't want to connect with me individually on that, although I'd love for you to, would be to just, again, sign up on that newsroom. Um, and once we have those details up on the website and we have that suite of documentation available for you to review, which will include all of the details around membership prices and what the benefits of membership are, we will share that out all very publicly um, on our website and through that communication channel. I am very, in terms of timeline, I'm very much hoping that we can have this in place by the start of fiscal. Uh, we have had, of course, a lot of institutions right now are starting to talk about 
um, you know, budget planning and, and, and work on a fiscal year. And we understand that um, we are working very hard to try to meet that uh, and, and we'll, we'll do our best to be able to accommodate that. And speaking of communication channels, I'm taking just one last scan uh, of Twitter and Zoom to see if there are any final questions. I don't see any. Um, oh, 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 uh, one coming in. Are you interested in having public library representation? Absolutely. Yes, we are. Um, that would fall under, well, that's a really good question because perhaps academic institution is, ex is too exclusive. Uh, see, this is a fantastic opportunity to think about these, you, you know, you try to be inclusive in terms of labeling for membership tiers, but when thinking about uh, public libraries, if that, well, how would we, that's a fantastic thing for me to take to executive committee today for us to talk about how we would slot that in as a membership option. Um, it's a nonprofit, um, but absolutely, yes. The short answer is yes. The long answer is I'm thinking I wanna make sure that we haven't been exclusive and excluding um, someone that may not feel like they fit very squarely in some of the membership tiers that are outlined on the slides here today. Um, again, please connect with me individually. Um, if you have questions about, uh, after seeing what I've presented in a very cursory way today without the detail, if you have any questions about, uh, first of all, if you have expressions of interest and don't quite know where you might fit in that, I would love to have a conversation with you um, and to make sure that you see yourself reflected uh, in what I presented today. And if not, we would love to talk about how we can accommodate that. And I do have uh, uh, the GoKB project uh, coming in from Twitter is also GoKB.org. So uh, details uh, can be found about that project there as well. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, this concludes today's forum on the Open Library Foundation. The recording of today's forum will be posted soon to the Open Library Foundation YouTube channel. If you're not already subscribed to that YouTube channel, you can find it by searching for Open Library Foundation. If you have any feedback on this forum or have an idea for a future forum, uh, please do contact uh, Ginny Boyer. Uh, she, her email address is on screen here or the chair of the foundation's marketing and communications team, uh, Rachel Fadlin, uh, who was introduced earlier. Uh, a word for those in the Folio community, our next Folio Forum will be on April 1st, where we will have a panel discussion between the four early adopters of Folio. Uh, registration for that can be found in the news and events link on the top uh, most toolbar of most of the Folio project pages. Thank you to you, Ginny, uh, and to everyone who asked questions and added comments. Uh, be safe out there in this uh, time of viruses and uh, communities uh, needing to come together and have a great rest of your day.